Okay, what this figure is, is basically a review of action potentials and how we get action potentials. And we're going to start just like we did when we talked about it in AMP1. We're going to talk about the sodium potassium ATPase. We'll talk about voltage gated channels. And then we'll get into the sequence of how those voltage gated channels open and close to give us a change in the membrane voltage of a cell. Okay, so starting up here at the top left, we'll just talk about sodium potassium ATPase. Okay, the sodium potassium ATPase is in every cell of the body. And basically what it does is it pumps three sodiums outside of each cell, two potassiums inside the cell, and it burns an ATP. Understand that I only have one cartoon drawn here, but there's millions of sodium potassium ATPases in each cell. There's going to be two effects of the sodium potassium ATPase. First of all, it's pumping sodium to the outside, so obviously you're going to have a gradient of sodium on the outside. It's pumping potassium on the inside, so potassium is going to be built up on the inside of the cell, so you have another potassium gradient. The other thing you'll notice is you're pumping three sodiums out and only two potassiums in. So you're pumping three positive charges out and only pushing two positives back in. So the effect is something like putting positive charges on the outside of the cell. Now the first guy that described this got to either say, I'm going to talk about the outside of the cell being positive relative to the inside, or I'm going to talk about the inside being negative relative to the outside, and he chose to talk about the inside of the cell. So the inside of the cell, we speak of the inside of the cell, is negative relative to the outside, and it's usually around minus 70 millivolts. Going down now here, we're going to start to introduce voltage-gated channels. What basically voltage-gated channels are is they have a positive region that's tied to the gate of the channel. And that positive region can slide in or out based on the voltage inside of the cell. So if we first look here at the closed cell, the inside of the cell is minus 70. That positive region is right here, and it's tied to a gate that I've drawn right here. So these positive charges are attracted to the minus 70, so the gate is attracted to the minus 70, and the gate stays down. It's closed, and no ions can go in or out. Contrast this over here, where we've changed to minus 55 millivolts. This would be the case of a sodium channel where it just takes a small change in voltage. That small change in voltage makes these positive charges not nearly as attracted to the inside anymore. So the, so the positive region slides out, the gate slides open, and now the channel is open. There's different ion channels, different voltage dependent ion channels, and they all will have different gates that open at different voltages. And it's true that different even different potassium channels will open at different voltages depending on where they are in the body. But probably the generality is to kind of understand when sodium channels are going to open, when calcium channels are going to open, and when potassium channels are going to open. Over here on the left we have, we have, sorry, excuse me, we have sodium channels. Sodium channels usually open with just a small change in voltage, usually from minus 70 up to about minus 55. And the reason that is the case is because sodium channels want to open to let sodium to come in and cause a big change in voltage. What's going to happen when this channel opens is a bunch of sodium is going to run into the cell just following its diffusion gradient. Sodium is positively charged, so it's going to make the voltage of this cell even more positive. Calcium channels we had a little bit in AMP1 because they let calcium come in, in that case at plus 30, so that neurotransmitter would be released. In this case, there's calcium channels that open at around minus 40 millivolts. These are called fast calcium channels, and they work just the same as any other voltage-dependent channel. Once the inside of the cell becomes a little bit more positive, these positive charges are not as attracted. The gate slides open, and calcium is allowed to come in. Calcium is positively charged and go more positive. We also have voltage-dependent potassium channels. These are usually the last to open, because when potassium channels open, potassium flows out following its diffusion gradient. So a positive charge is leaving the cell, meaning the inside of the cell is going to become more negative. And it's, in general, the job of the potassium channel to return the cell's voltage back down to negative voltages. So after sodium has depolarized the cell, potassium leaving is going to repolarize the cell. And before I move, and before we go into everything over here, I just wanted to outline how usually these voltage-dependent channels will open in a sequence that's called an action potential. And we graph these sequences by putting time on the x-axis and membrane voltage on the y-axis. can make that a little bit bigger here and show that what's going to happen here. In this case, it's a little bit different than we talked about before, but, but you should be able to follow along. It's a bit different than AMP1. But in this case, we have a channel that opens up. In this case, it's a sodium channel that opens. Sodium comes into the cell, makes the cell more positive. 
then a calcium channel opens. Again, calcium runs into the cell, making the cell more positive still. Once we get up to a positive voltage, then a potassium channel will open. Potassium will leave the cell and take us back down to negative voltage voltages. So this sequence occurs over and over in the autorhythmic cell, but it's kind of the same general shape as the action potential we talked about when we talked about nervous tissue. So let's back up and talk about 